Yo, what's up? I'm Zach. Welcome back to my channel of Ruby Mythology. Today I'll bring you guys a new Ruby What If, and that is What If John Died Instead Pura? And before I continue on, make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe, and turn on notification bell for more Ruby content. That shows and means a lot to me that you guys want to see more Ruby content on this channel. And there's several things I want to need to go over first. I'm going to try my best not to use a similar idea that a YouTube name of uh, Rigor, aka You All Right, who actually made his version. I might add a little bit of it, but not too much. And I want to make something originally on my own. And I'm plus, I'm probably going to mention something in the, um, um, the fifth Ruby official manga anthology, Shine. The, about the team Jennifer because there's a lot I could use the the book from the manga so I could use this for the what if so that is as well and you guys voted uh, for the what if on my main channel shout out pretty is that you guys want to see this one instead of um well the um of uh, the zombie outbreak that I've been wanting to do for the past God knows how long. And so, yeah. And also another thing. I'm going to try my best not to make the videos too long. Like 30 or 40 some minutes long. Is because, well, since the Ruby series still goes on and not fully in yet. I want the series to go a little bit longer and shorter. You know, each video will be shorter because I want it to be longer series than just being a one video or short series. I want the series to go a little bit longer, you know what I mean? So, that's the main reason. So, yeah. Um, so pretty much, I think that's all the summary that I need to bring up on, you know, what you guys could be expected of this, etc., so, with out of the way, let's just go ahead and get into this uh, scenario. So basically, we start off when John and Pira are outside of the academy when Ospen is fighting against Cinder alone. When John says that he could, he think he has Glinda's number, and and Pira just looks back. And see the tower. And John asked Pira what was that. And Pira said I. And we hear the sound f going flying up top to the tower. Which reveals to be Cinder defeating Ozpin. Just like the original. And John is you know sh uh, depressed. And doesn't know what to say that Ozpin is dead. And Pira said there's no time. And and she tells him to go find the others and bring them here. And John said, what, what are you going to do? And Pira looks at the tower and John said, no, no you can't. You saw how powerful she was. Pira, I just can't. And John, I mean, Pira kiss, uh John just like the original. And when Pira breaks the kiss... Pira says that she's sorry. She used her semblance to push John into the um, the locker where put all the weapons at, send a location to get made John to be far away from her as possible. So, which that goes out the same, just like the original. After what had happened, Pira does go after Cinder if I send her. Just like the original. But we see John is at the same location that he was landed on thanks to Pura. But when he got out of there, he is about to break down in tears, which he is. But he ain't, you know, just gonna sit there and wait. He just goes run back to the academy while he's doing that. He contacts Ruby while he was running. And he tells Ruby and Weiss, just like the original, but while he's running, he tells them that Pira is going to fight them, 
by her on top of the tower. She won't stand a chance. And Ruby asks John, where, where are he? Where is he? And John said, don't worry about me. Just please help me to save her. And and then um and Pierre I mean, not Pierre and Ruby asked John about that he we, we will and just uh, just tell us where you are and John just while he's running he just throws his scroll far away from while he was running destroy his scroll and then uh so basically Ruby and Wise you know go and find John just like the original. Nothing has changed. And when John reached the tower, the tower is almost surrounded by Grimms. And John is trying to catch his breath with all the running until he is, before he's about to, you know, ready for a fight, he sees um, gun, uh, uh, gunshot and fireball hitting the Grimm. And John turn his head and see Ruby and wise and without a uh, second thought John just keep on running and head inside the tower we hear um um Ruby said John wait just help us deal with these grim then we're gonna say Pira but John didn't hear her he just keep on going and wise tells Ruby that he'll be fine he could he be he can find yeah I can't talk, he'll be fine. He will save her. Right now we gotta deal with these grim. And while they're dealing with the grim, just like the original, John can hear the explosion on top of the tower and the fight going on. And John is trying to catch his breath and says he needs to get up there before anything happens to Pira. So he founds the elevator where it's pretty much been destroyed because pretty much like similar damage like Pira did. So John knows which elevator that Pira took. So he's trying to figure out where he could climb. There's really no place that he could climb at. And he sees uh, a big wire, like a wire that um kind of like for the elevator size. So... So he grabbed the rope and grabbed the wire from, you know, the tightest um, wire to carry the elevator. He grabs that and started climbing up. And he's still catching his breath. He's still going fast as he can because he wants to get there in time. So he can help Pira save her before anything happens to her. And he says, don't worry, Pira. I'm coming. Just, just hanging in a little bit longer. And he keeps going. And non-stop. And the fight between Pura and Cinder. That goes out the same. And when John is getting closer. He checks his scroll for. And well forgot. He just throw his scroll. And all that breath and energy. He's. Well. He just realized. That. That attack that Cinder gave him when he tried to counter her did ruin his aura. So, I mean, his aura flicked a little bit, but not, you know, disappeared. So, John has a little bit of aura left, but he doesn't care about that point. He only cares about to save Pyrrha. That's all that mattered. And when he got to the top and see the door open, He's finally uh, relieved that he made it on time. And he hoped he could make it. And so he climbs on the door that is open. Trying to get in. And um, he's trying to catch his breath. But he just couldn't. And until... Um, so what John is seeing right now... Is well, Pira has Cinder in like a kind of like a similar position where Pira had her weapon around Cinder's neck and Cinder used her power to melt the blade to break it, kind of like that. While she was 
uh, was um, doing that, she hears someone calling her name. She and this person scream, Pira! And John and Pira turn her head back just a little bit, and she sees John climbing on top of the tower. And Pira said, John? And she turned her head back and see that, um, well, the dragon grim coming towards, um, coming towards uh, the tower. So basically some of the same. And it caused massive damage. And so it basically goes out the same, just like the original. And John is barely, when he got close and got out, um, uh, passed through the door by climbing up from the door when he was about to go in charge when the um the destruction from that groom did one of the metal peas came and hit John but John used his shield to block in but him on the wall did make him go a little bit uh dizzy like almost blacked out and he lost his aura so but John doesn't care at that point and um so basically John is barely can see his eyes a little bit blurry he cannot tell so so basically the fight goes out the same with Cinder and Pyrrha where Pyrrha used her semblance on, on Cinder and the last thing that Pyrrha could do is use her shield against Cinder so basically, like I said, the fight between Pyrrha and Cinder goes out the same. Pyrrha used her semblance on Cinder, but that didn't go well. And it shattered Pyrrha's aura. And the only thing Pyrrha could do is try her best to throw the shield at Cinder. But when Cinder th shoot the arrow, the arrow went through and stabbed a hit on Pyrrha's leg that made her fall to her knees. And... When, um, in court we have a monologue with, um, Cinder says that it's a shame that the power doesn't, you know, deserve you or belong to you, but I would cheat something that you would never imagine. And Pyrrha says, do you believe in destiny? And Cinder says, yes. And... John's vision cleared and see Pyrrha on her knees and Cinder with an arrow about to shoot her. John runs fast as he can to save Pyrrha. And at the right moment that, P that John jumped in in the middle, the arrow shots in the back of John's chest. And Pyrrha's eyes widen that... John just did that. She is sh shocked. And John falls falls to the ground to the right side. And Pyrrha moved and caught John by her arm. And sees, well, the image, what you see right now, is basically how it is. The arrow plunged through... Um, from the back to the front of John's chest from his heart. Pyrrha's eyes widening and her tears coming down from her eyes. And only thing that Pyrrha was, saw that John only smiled and he couldn't get the... He wanted to say something but he couldn't. All he could do was smile. He placed his hand on Pyrrha's face, wiping off the tear, basically trying to tell her, don't cry. And John, John's blue eyes turned to black. And John died in Pyrrha's arm. When the arrow dissipates, and same goes for John's body. And when Ruby shows up the tower as well, she saw it all happen. And even John, even Ruby, start to tear up. 
and and Ruby is dunstruck, just like the original when she saw Pyrrha. And Ruby basically gir- bust out uh, the silver eye and scream out, John, and basically paralyze the Grimm, turn it to stone. And of course, Cinder, you know, basically still will have it to her, just like the original. And since Ruby has been knocked out conscious because of her using silver eye, and this is where the aftermath of Battle of the Beacon from in the um in the Team Juniper anthology manga in manga where instead of John asking Crow where's Pyrrha and gave and Crow gave Pyrrha the what is left of her since that scene would never happen in the manga Pyrrha is Still breaking down tears. And the only thing that she's holding. Is. Well. Is. Well John's shield and his sword. Well actually no she's not holding it. The sword and shield is. Right next to her. And a little bit of tears drip down. And hits on the shield and the sword. She's. Just doesn't know what to say. She said this cannot be happening. This this did not just happen. This cannot be real. And Pyrrha is well devastated that it just just happened. The only word she could say in her mind is John John and of course, at the the aftermath when everyone is getting recovered. So basically, um, um, Pyrrha is living at. Let's just say, we honestly do not know how far did John and the others got to Ruby's place. We honestly do not know. So, let's just say. There's like a small hotel that is closer to Ruby's place that Pyrrha, Ren, and Nora are staying at for right now. And Pyrrha is still, well, she's in a dark place right now. And she's, well, doesn't know what to do. She's been staring at... The sword and shield of John for God knows how long. And then she went over her scroll and watching so many video footage that her and John had been, you know, hanging out and sparring and training, etc. And the only one thing that made her teared is John's smile. The picture that she took from the pr- from the the prom dance or the dance party, whatever you call. It. Yes, in the manga, Pyrrha took a picture of John while he was smiling in the women uh, dress. That's the only picture that Pyrrha ever actually has of John smiling for the first time. After that. Pyrrha falls down to her knees, cover her mouth while she is crying, while she's looking at the smile of John in the photo. She couldn't look at it no more. Her eyes are both closed, more tears coming down. She cries so much. And Ren and Nora could hear her crying. Ren and Nora actually do feel heartbreaking that the team leader just died because they just wanted to save Pyrrha and none of that both Ren and Nora felt guilty that they couldn't be there for John to help him to save Pyrrha if they were around if they have enough strength they could have saved Pyrrha they both would have been alive 
But they were so exhausted they couldn't do nothing about it. So Pira decided to keep wanted to keep moving forward for John, but she still is heartbreaking. So instead of John writing the letter for Ruby to let her know, it's Pira. And we see uh, Pira, you know, after writing the letter of the note for sending Ruby, we see uh, uh, Pira still crying, but behind him is a, is John. You know, like, in the manga, it shows John, but behind him is, like, uh, Pira, but it doesn't show her face, that kind of thing. But that's basically what it is. There's, like, a fan art that you can find, John PNG, and you can see what I'm talking about. And, basically, basically, after, um, after sending that note to Ruby that Bo, her, Ren, and Nora are gonna go and see Ruby if they still want to go to Haven Academy. And, when Ruby came out of a room, came out of the house, just that original, we see Ren and Nora. And, Ruby asks, if they're ready, and Ren said they are, and Ruby turn her head and see Pira wearing a black cloak, and she cover herself, not revealing her face, because she's still well in the dark place. She's still wearing the same outfit that she is, but she's coming on with black cloak, and. The only weapon that she's carrying is hers, is hers, and John's shield and sword, because that's the only thing that is part of John, and she wants to keep it until well, when she ever she come across to John's family member, she wants to give it to what has belong to the Ark family, and after that, both Ruby. Pira, Ren, Onora are handed off to Haven Academy. And that is where I'm going to end this part here. Like I said before, I don't want to go into the entire series. But right now, I want to bring up Weiss in this. But I want to save it in the next part. Because... I will say this a little, how Weiss feel after she been taking from her father. Weiss felt guilt and sadness. Why? I will explain that in the next part. So, yeah. I just want to end this part here so you guys could enjoy this. So, yeah. And I'm glad I got the manga of Ruby Anthology. So I could do the what if better. And I'm glad I did. So you guys are probably going to see more reference from the manga in the future. Maybe. So yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Links to my other channels, my social media, and my Discord server will be down below. So why you guys don't drop all the shenanigans again. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Ruby is love. Ruby is for life. Keep moving forward, and I'll see you guys later.